Laptop Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, right, yes, now I've given many presentations about accessibility and many presentations about accessibility to WordPress uh, conferences and um, stuff uh, and other meetups and what have you. But um, I, I also do training for developers in accessibility and one of the things I've realized as I've done that is when people actually understand the tools that some people with disabilities use, um, it really helps them to understand uh, the problems that they've got to solve in, w in when they actually build and design their websites um, to, actually, to actually incorporate the needs of uh, people with disabilities. And so um, I'm not going to give you much of a preamble because I haven't got much time, but what I'm going to do uh, in my little presentation here is I'm going to cover and demonstrate very briefly for you uh, two important bits of assistive technology. That's what AT stands for. Um, Assistive technology comes in a variety of forms. This is the simplest for me, because um, I have poor eyesight. Um, but these are both software-based tools. Dragon, naturally speaking, is the one I'm going to do first. Um, it's a live demo, so uh, there's always a bit of a gamble for that. So, Dragon, naturally speaking, is speech recognition software um, for Windows and Macs. Um, it's not currently available on uh, mobile devices, although that will change soon. There's a new Android um, product coming. Uh, I think it's in beta in the next latest version of Android, which is going to replicate it as well. Um, it's primarily used by people with motor impairments, people who can't, uh, for whatever reason, um, interact with the keyboard and interact with a mouse. And obviously, it's not just about browsing the web. It's about controlling your whole, whole um, laptop or PC. Um, I actually use it myself now if I'm writing documents. Once you get used to the fact of talking to your own machine, um, it can actually be a useful productivity tool. Um, and there's lots of voice commands to learn. Um, so I'm just going to get cracking on that. But first, before I get actually into the demos, I'm just going to talk about the other piece of assistive technology that I'm going to uh, demo, and that's NVDA. Um, NVDA is an open source screen reader. It's free to download, and it's used by people, um, primarily those with blindness and other sight issues. Um, but it's also sometimes used by people with cognitive impairments and uh, people with dyslexia as well. Um, it reads out what it finds on the page. Um, so it's basically working off whatever is in the DOM. Uh, when you're in your website is either arrives in a browser or has been manipulated in a browser. And like uh, Dragon, naturally speaking, this is software that people are going to be using to interact with everything, not just browsing the web. Um, it's a very keystroke-based software. There's lots and lots of keystrokes to learn. I myself don't know all the keystrokes. keystrokes. There's like uh, probably hundreds of them, but I know enough to uh, get round. So uh, that's my little... Uh, presentation out the way, what I'm now going to get straight into is the demo. And we're going to do Dragon, naturally speaking, first. Um, now, I'm using this with Internet Explorer. Boo. But, um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's IE 11, so it's better than it used to be. But interest, um, what's, what's interesting is that um, Dragon, naturally speaking, and some other assistive technologies are designed to work best with Internet Explorer because um, with, with all its Despite all its faults, um, Microsoft have put a lot of um, stuff into Internet Explorer, so there's lots of uh, access to the API and everything like that. And so it's an easy tool for, for assistive technology to hook into. That's not true of all of them, as you'll see when I demonstrate um, NVDA. But, um, right, so very simply, um, you can see there's a little icon at the top of the page um, that's telling me that Dragon, naturally speaking, is running, but it's not actively listening to what I'm saying at the moment, but I'll change that in a minute. <coughs> it's not a time to choke, is it? <coughs> Wake up. Page down. Page down. Page up. Start scrolling down. Stop. 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 Go to sleep. Now, what's interesting is whenever I demo uh, Dragon, naturally speaking, um, 
I can run into problems because I enunciate things a lot better because I'm talking to like lots and lots of people and it doesn't always recognise my voice. When I'm in my office at home, I'm much more, you know, sort of talking colloquially, colloquially perhaps, and whatever. But um, that first demo was to see how you can move up and down a page and everything like that. Now, and the next thing we're going to show you is how you can interact with links on the page. Um, this is using a, uh, the 2016 theme, which has a good level of accessibility. Wake up. Click link. Now, it's difficult for some of you to see but there are little green tabs that have appeared next to all the links that are in the current view. And I can now choose from one of those links to actually follow it. Um, so I'm going to say choose four. Choose four. Go to sleep. So now, wake up. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> right. Okay. I think we're there again. I think we're in control again now. Um, that's one way to operate links. But it, what you can do also is you can actually specify the link text as well. So if I do click post six, So if your link text is uh, sufficiently uh, unique enough, you can actually use the link text directly. Um, and uh, so that's kind of briefly how you can get about. Switch to next tab. Go to sleep. Here I've got um, a page, which you'll see again in a minute. Um, I've marked up two forms with... Um, uh, similar forms, and one of them, the one on the right-hand side has better accessible markup than the one on the left. Um, and I'm just going to show you how you can interact with form elements. Wake up. Click your name. Click your name. Go to sleep. Now, Disappointingly, nothing happened because this is badly marked up, this one. But if I try using the ones on the right-hand side, I can interact with the form elements directly because the labels are actually explicitly linked to the input fields. Wake up. Click your postcode. And now, of course, focus is in there. And now I'm showing you the dictation feature. <laughs> Press tab. Show choices, move down, move down, hide choices, click yes, click if not, go to sleep. So you can see where I can actually directly uh, reference though, all those input fields using the, reference, you know, using the actual label text. Um, so where you've got things that aren't marked up so well, it's not the end of the world because it's possible to actually, like I did initially with click link, I can actually say uh, the, the type of the control and it will give me an option. Wake up. Click checkbox. Choose two. Click radio button. Choose four. Click type text, choose four, go to sleep. So there we go. Um, in a nutshell, that's kind of how, like, you know, a, a very small scratch at the surface of how people will use Dragon, naturally speaking, to interact with form elements. So it's, um, there's just one other thing I want to show you, which is um, how if you can't access things, things directly, you can actually emulate mouse movement. You don't really want to force people to do this because it's a bit of a pig. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, if you can act, make your pages more accessible, it certainly saves people a lot of time. Wake up. Mouse grid. Seven. Seven. Two, 
two, mouse click. Go to sleep. So you can actually target the mouse using the mouse grid, which sort of like increasingly narrows down where the mouse pointer actually is. And then when you're ready, you can um, issue a click command and it will actually do whatever you want to do. The other thing, I'm not going to show you now because it's a bit of a fiddle, but you can, if you want to, emulate drag and drop facilities. I know if I have a bit longer, I often I will demonstrate that either in the widgets area of WordPress or actually just by moving the tabs around. But I want to end uh, that demonstration of Dragon, naturally speaking, there. And then I'm going to start up NVDA. So I'm just going to do a quick changeover. I'm going to close Dragon before I fire up NVDA because they don't always play nicely together. Now then, okay, I'm using um, Firefox for NVDA because that, it works best with NVDA, as Firefox NVDA. Um, that's not to say you can't use other browsers, but um, you get the best experience um, with that. And hopefully you'll, get, you'll hear something in a moment. <laughs> Loading NVDA. Please wait. Welcome to NVDA dialog. Welcome to NVDA. Thank you. Most commands for controlling NVDA require you to hold down the NVDA key while accessibility examples. Practical demonstrations of accessibility must. Right. Now, NVDA is a screen reader, and as you can hear, it's a computer generated voice, and it just talks at you all the time. It's because there's lots of information that it needs to tell you about web pages and, and what's going on. Um, just to make it easy for you, I'm actually going to turn on um, a facility for the speech viewer, which is really useful. So it'll actually, you can actually see uh, on the screen what it's saying. I'll just get that going. NVDA menu, preference, tools, view log, speech viewer S, accessibility examples, NVDA speech, NVDA, NVDA speech viewer. Navid news, menu bar, accessibility examples, Practical demonstration. Right, now the first thing that you, um, you hear when you arrive at a new web page is it will tell you lots, um, the page title. So that's why page titles are very important. Uh, and then it will tell you things like how many links are on the page, how many headings are on the page, and various things like that. Um, for, let's, let's look at links next. And there's an, a various ways that people can um, find links on the page. Um, links, as you probably know, will get keyboard focus natively. Um, the other things that can get, get keyboard focus are uh, input fields and buttons. Um, if it's not any of those three things, then uh, keyboard focus won't actually land on it. Um, that's not the only way you move around the screen, but typically people might use the tab control. Clickable banner landmark accessibility examples visited link. Okay, so this is the link that pops back to the, uh, to the home page there, and it says banner landmark accessibility examples visited link. So it's bits of information like that. It's telling you it's a link. It's telling you that I've been there before. It's giving you the link text, accessibility examples. And banner landmark means that it actually um, it's telling you it's moved into the banner area of the site because in 2016, although this is in the left-hand column, it's actually marked up as your banner because that's where a logo would go if you wanted it. Um, there's, um, landmark roles are important um, to help people understand which part of the page they're in. And as you move around a page using screen readers, it will, it, uh, and you move from one region to the next, it will tell you when you've entered a new region. Navigation landmark list with four items, home visited link. Contact us visited link. Okay, so you, you can use the tab key to move around. And in a moment, I'll show you the forms page that I showed you a minute ago. Um, another way of doing it, to which you'll save a bit of time, is there's a, a facility to list the links on a page. Elements list dialog, tree view, level zero, contact us four of 20. So what I've got here is um, it's a list of all the links on the page, and a lot of blind people use this functionality because it saves them time rather than tab, 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 moving around the page. Um, people can find the link they're interested in and, and actually fire that link from within this dialog box. So sometimes you might even find that very few people using screen readers 
might actually go into the page, they might use the dialog box, boxes like this. Now, I can select the Sample links, page 5 of 20, level 0. Um, by, by using the up and down arrow key here, and it's telling me that sample page 5 of 20. So it's telling me there are 20 links on that page, of which this is number 5. Uh, Log 6 of 20, level 0. Okay, I'm not quite sure what the level zero means there because it's not a heading, I don't think, or maybe it is marked up as a heading, I'm not certain on that one. That's, um, but you can actually, then the default action is to follow that link if I press the enter key now. Now, at the top of the elements list, you'll see there's also headings and landmarks, and I'm going to use the shift tab control to get up there. Type, grouping, yeah. links, radio button, check, alt, plus K. Because it's a radio button group, the way to move between... Sorry, what was the timing? Thank you. Um, to move between the uh, radio buttons is to use the up and down arrow key. Headings, radio button, check, alt, plus H. Right, now I've got a list of all the headings on the page. And this is really useful because if you've got a, a very busy page, like, for example, the BBC News uh, page, um, front page, this can be a, a, a godsend for people um, because it enables them to quickly find sections of the page that might be interesting to them. And, and that's why it's really important to use headings and to make sure that the hierarchy of the headings is sensible because you'll notice, I mean, we can see this, um, but it's also, it's going to tell me if I move into the heading... Tree view, recent posts, one of three level zero. Recent comments, two of three level zero. Now the level zero is making sense because it's kind of telling me that these are sort of top level ones. Home page expanded three on three level, level one Vitironka source I expanded one on three. Now it's now I've moved into one that's actually um, uh, heading there, uh, which is sort of kind of nested inside some other section, and so it's saying level one. So NVDA is telling me about level two the, uh, mu master, right, one of two. It's telling me about the hierarchy here. And the other thing is this, this enables a screen reader users to um, move around a page because the default option here is when I've found a heading that I'm interested in, I press the enter key and I move directly to that part of the page, not something that sighted users who are using keyboard can actually do. Um, but briefly, whilst this dialog box is still open, I'll show you the other thing, the landmarks bit at Type, the top. Type, grouping, head, landmarks, radio button, check, alt, plus D. I mentioned earlier the... Um, landmarks where sort of the various regions on the page because 2016 which is the theme in use here has a good level of accessibility it's marked up well with um, uh, landmark roles and you can see the various ones up there banner is where you put your site name you know your logo etc etc navigation well that speaks for itself complementary is often stuff to do with a sidebar there's probably too many complementaries there. You don't need like multiple ones of those. Main is where your main content is, and content info is often associated with um, the footer, where you might put your contact details and other bits and pieces like that. So in the same way as with headings, three view level zero navigation two on five. I can I, I can select the area of the page I want to be in. Access home visited link contact us visited link sample page link expand child menu button collapse blog. Now, I've, I, there's a lot going on there, but it's actually moved focus into the first element within the area, within the region that I selected. Now, an, um, other ways of moving around the page. Um, if I want to move from heading to the heading to heading, um, I haven't got to select the headings list. I can just use the H key. Out of list, complementary landmark, complementary landmark, recent posts, heading level two. So I'm down here now at the bottom. I'm not going to move too far from that. But recent posts at the bottom left-hand corner there, I've found the next heading. So if I press H again... Complimentary landmark recent comments heading level two. These are the sort of widget area um, headings. Main landmark home page heading level one. Vitironka source I heading level two. Now we're in the... Um, we're actually in the content area now. Um, so it said uh, that Latin uh, Vitironkus, uh, all key heading level two. And you know, there's loads of uh, commands like that. So it's not just headings. I can move from link to link to link that way. I can move to from form element through form elements this way if I want to as well. Um, right, moving on, I'm going to show you how NVDA works. Example forms. 
the example forms heading level one forms markup link link before form heading level two badly marked up form your the default when when thank you uh, when you arrive at a new page is that it will start usually start at the top and start reading down um, it will, and if you let it go it will probably read you the entire content of the page very few people are actually going to do that because obviously it can take quite a while so people will be using the various tools that I've shown you um, to actually help them navigate their way around the page and find stuff they're interested in. So, uh, where are we? Let's see. Combo box, please choose. Collapse. Right. Okay. Please. Check box not checked. Okay, I'm going to cheat. For badly marked up. Edit as autocomplete. Blank. Right. Now, I've put focus into the your name um, text box. And this, uh, this side is the one that's ones that aren't mark, marked up properly. And so it's told me edit has autocomplete blank. Edit is the type of the control. Has autocomplete is like a browser setting. And blank is the current value. But what's missing from the equation there is there's no prompt to tell me what this input's for. So if I then uh, do the tab again. Combo the box, thing, please choose. Collapse. The next thing in the tab order is that select or drop down, and you can say it's like combo box, please choose, collapse. So it's a combo box, that's the type of thing it is. Please choose is the current value, and it's collapsed. It means it's not expanded. Because um, you can, if you know the right keystrokes, you can actually expand the, uh, the, the select to actually review the options. Checkbox not checked. Similarly, checkbox not checked. Now, I'm not going to labour it by going through all of them, but suffice to say, there is no meaningful information being given to the screen reader user uh, in this, for this side, of side because the labels aren't, aren't correctly marked up. So I'm going to quickly whip through. Checkbox, radio, radio, edit multi. Checkbox not checked. I have read the terms. Submit button. Your postcode edit has autocomplete blank. Right, now focus is on the your postcode field. And immediately you can see that we've got the prompt, your postcode edit has autocomplete. So it's, it's prompting me what it needs in this input field. Which dessert did you have? Combo box, please choose. Collapsed. So I can now, once I'm in the, you know, once again, the prompt, what dessert did you have? Um, and I can now use the options. Manifee pie. Now, when I'm, I'm using the up and down arrow key here to actually move through the options, one of the key things, if you do any interactivity with JavaScript that's driven from a drop down. Every time I do that, it fires the on change event. So if you've ever got anything that's driven off a, a drop down, you need to be very careful because it might mean that you, the screen reader users can only ever see the first element. Because as, as soon as I change it to something else, it, fire, it might f take me somewhere else. That's if you ever use um, that, uh, a, a drop down as some kind of navigation feature. Would you recommend us to your friends? Grouping. Yes, radio button not checked. One of two. Now, radio buttons are an interesting thing because they have it's a, the radio button itself, and it's got a label associated with it. But radio buttons are often like, um, well, if pretty much always, they're an answer to a question, and so you need to make sure that there's sufficient markup in this form to basically pose the question. In this case, would you recommend us to your friends? And then the the answer as well, and that is done using a field set and with a legend. So you you, set, you create a field set into which you place your radio button group, and then you let your legend becomes the question you want to ask. Now, it's that's important, uh, you know, because um, I've done some work. Thank you. I've done some work with uh, insurance quote journeys and uh, home insurance. There might be lots of questions that have a series of uh, yes/no answers, like um, are there any tall trees near your property? Is your property near a river? Um, are there other buildings within you know within 20 meters or something like that? And if you if you don't get the markup right, all you get is a sort of yes yes. Yes, radio button not checked. No radio button not checked. Yes, radio button not checked. No radio button not checked. And so it's important that you get the labels right. Be wary of doing, the, this is my last point, I have read the terms and conditions there, where you've made, you've put a link inside a label. One of, one of the browse, one of the uh, lesser known features of browsers is if you've got a marked up label um, if you click on that label, it puts focus into the input field. So when you put a link in a label, you're actually 
confuse, you're, in some ways you're confusing the browser because you're saying, I, I want someone to be able to click on this to go to a different page, but also it's part of a label. So actually, if I want to click on that, I want to put focus in that input field. Now, if you do it how I've done it on the right-hand side, that's, that's okay, and it will treat it as two separate items. The problem with, you, you get with that, at the moment, using voiceover in iOS devices, uh, you know, like on your iPads and iPhones, voiceover is the built-in screen reader with that, is that um, it treats it as a label, but you can't get to the link, and so if that's the only way that people can get to see your terms and conditions, anyone using voiceover uh, on an iOS device, they're not going to be out of seat to get to that. So that's something to bear in mind as well. As I say, I can go on for hours um, about this, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stop there. This is just scratching the surface. I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much. <laughs>